Hey guys, Cookie here with another Helldivers 2 update. We've got more leaks and also, is it possible to land on a planet without a ton of fog? I'm going to talk about all of that here in just a second. However, the first thing that I want to talk about today is the progress of the Major Order. Ustatu has just been liberated. It is now at 100%, so no more worries about that planet. However, the comments that I had talked about yesterday saying that Vandalon would have to be liberated before Troost turned out to be correct, because now Vandalon 4 is the next planet that needs to be liberated. This has just gotten underway, so no real progress on this planet yet, but plenty of time to do so. Still about three days left to complete this major order and two planets to go, so progress is off to a good start. With every new Helldivers day is a new Helldivers 2 personal order, and today's is to extract with 10 common samples. Now when I first saw this, I thought this would actually be somewhat difficult, because extracting at one time with 10 common samples is actually pretty damn hard. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. Very often, plenty of things that can go wrong. However, after playing for a little bit, I realized that you could collect this over multiple matches. You could collect three one match, four another match, five another match, and get it instead of collecting all at one time. If you just play on an easier game mode, this is actually very easy to get, so an easy 15 medals. The Superstore has been updated with a couple of new outfit options, including the FS-34 Exterminator and the CE-81 Juggernaut. What I've seen of these armors, the Juggernaut's pretty cool, but I have to say that the Exterminator looks very, very badass. Swanee so actually got this with his super credits, and it, you basically, the helmet it basically looks like a Sith Inquisitor from Star Wars, so if you're familiar with that, it looks pretty badass and it's definitely one that I would recommend if you've got the extra super credits to spend. It's really, really cool looking on the battlefield. So let's talk about some of the fogginess on these planets. This Reddit post does a pretty good job of summarizing the pain of a lot of Helldivers when it comes to the fogginess on seemingly every planet. It says, stop making literally everything foggy. I can understand the bugs, shore, spores, and shit. Even then, I'd argue that sometimes the planet just becomes more foggy the more you take things out, which doesn't make any sense given that you actively closing bug holes, breaking spore emitters but with bots why does every planet look like 400 million people smoke 12 packs of cigarettes on the missionary before you get in he goes on to say a lot more but basically why is every single planet insanely foggy it does make things extremely hard some of the comments even mention why isn't there night vision to help with the fog that would kind of make sense all this to be said what is my opinion on the fogginess so i come at this from a lot of different angles I would love the fog if it was actually just smoke, because the idea of smoke after a battle and explosions and the smoke coming from fires and detonations all over the map, that's kind of cool because that really gives a wartime atmosphere. What I don't like is that when you land, it's immediately filled with smoke everywhere. That part makes a little bit less sense. However, I really like it sometimes. I enjoy a diversity of environmental elements, so fog being one of those is perfectly fine with me. However, it is still extremely annoying when it's every single match. It just has a ton of fog. That's not that creative, and it kind of takes away from the environmental elements, as one comment mentions here, where they say, I dislike fog slash rain, because it hides how beautiful the worlds are. Whenever you fight on clear planets, it's an eye-opener. And I, I do agree. You can't really see as much of the environment as you would like to, and I think that's kind of a mistake. I think it would make more sense if you get a foggy feel as the battle rages on because of the smoke and stuff from that. That would make a little bit more more sense but the point being the fog's a little overused and they could definitely dial that back another reddit post that brings up something interesting is this one saying destroying respawn points shouldn't increase enemy spawns period it's a pretty long post so i obviously won't read all of it the post essentially goes into the idea of how when you blow up a fabricator for the automatons or a bug hole for the terminids it actually increases enemy spawns instead of decreasing them which has been proven by a lot of different tests and stuff for that matter in case you think this just isn't accurate and if this is the case which from all that i saw uh, that this redditor and others have brought up does seem to be the case that really doesn't make a lot of sense now one of the comments brought up something interesting basically there's two sides of the story destroying fabricators should lessen patrol density because you're cutting off the source of the bomb or in the terminated case, the bug holes. The bots should be aware that their outposts are disappearing and send troops to investigate slash eliminate the threat. So that's the two sides to it. It would make sense that there'd be less of them because you're blowing up the source of them. However, they also would want to frantically attack because they would know that their nests and stuff are blowing up. So it does kind of go both ways. But as this Redditor also points out, there isn't much of a reason in these games to actually destroy these outposts or these respawn points because you don't get that 
that much out of it, especially as you're a lot higher level. The payout is just not that useful. So basically, there's no reason to do it, and you basically could just skip it every time, which could be a problem that, that Arrowhead needs to think about down the road for the high-level players. There's a lot of things high-level players are starting to struggle with, as is common in most games, but I do think this Redditor makes a pretty good point that this might not make a whole lot of sense. I think there's a lot of ways they could fix this and still make it a fun experience because you don't want to reduce the difficulty too much and I don't think this post is really telling you to turn the difficulty down. I simply think this post is trying to say that there should be some sort of reward for blowing up these fabricators and the holes because otherwise why would you do it? There's also been a couple of leaks as there pretty much is every single day. The most interesting of these leaks is this one which shows a hell diver who landed on a very unusual looking planet. It's a terminated mission and according to the title they wonder if this is super earth now there's no confirmation that this is super earth however it is some sort of texture for a planet as you can see in the background of this planet just a ton of really pretty looking mountains kind of has almost like a desert mountain kind of look with no snow or anything just very bare plain rock mountains but very pretty looking and interesting but i do not believe this is super earth as most of the comments don't think so either but there is a chance that this could be some biome of super earth but i would think that the super earth biome would show a lot more signs of human life like cities or urban populations considering Helldivers 1 had kind of urban maps and stuff to represent Super Earth I would think that they would do the same for this this doesn't give me the feel of Super Earth it gives me the feel of a new planet which is also very exciting and either way it looks really pretty I don't believe that the background though fits the foreground I don't think the <laughs> I think this is kind of a, a placeholder for the time being as a background for probably a completely different texture as far as where the Helldiver himself is actually at because the forest doesn't really fit the background of these barren mountains. But either way, it looks pretty and it's always kind of exciting to see what new things the developers are working on from behind the scenes and this is just another example of that. The other leak that I found interest in is this one which shows a farm equipment model which would be interesting for a couple different reasons. One, this would also point to super earth potentially this would make a lot of sense that in an agricultural sector of super earth there would be plows and stuff like this however it would be interesting because most of these planets are pretty lifeless they're, they're basically i mean the battles are a lot of fun and everything but there aren't any other kinds of life going on so even for farm equipment to be going on which probably could be automated without a human present or anything still would be something going on in the background which is pretty unusual right now outside of just straight up war they haven't seen any like signs of life on any of these planets outside of the terminids and automatons so even if this isn't about super earth it would represent life prospering on a planet which would be unusual the way hell divers is at the moment so this is interesting potentially something that they're looking into my guess is though this would probably relate to super earth in some way and it is interesting that super earth rumors are starting to circulate amongst leakers lastly there's another leak that has more footage of a hell diver on a yet to be discovered planet this is the acid planet of esker you might remember in one of our latest videos we talked about this planet although it didn't have a name at the time but now we know it is called Esker. We also knew that this planet would probably be connected to Acid Rain which we also found in the leaks that day. Well now we get our first taste of what both of those things look like. Acid Rain on the Acid Planet of Esker and to be honest with you not nearly as terrifying as I thought it would be. From everything that's shown in this footage and there could be changes between now and when this actually gets released. Acid Rain doesn't really seem to affect you much more than the rain that's already in the game. It, of course, obscures your vision, makes it a little bit more difficult to traverse terrain and stuff like that. But overall, it doesn't really seem like it does anything more than that. So I don't know if that's a relief or I'm a little bit disappointed. I would have hoped it would have a little bit more of an effect. But like I said, they still have time. They could fix that. Also, as far as Esker is concerned, this planet looks like a heck of a lot of gas, acid, and fog, which kind of connects to what we were talking about earlier. It's very much difficult to see and not exactly what I expected it to look like so we'll just have to see how things turn out with this if this is actually what it's going to end up looking like when it gets released or not but this is kind of our first taste of it so let us know in the comments what you guys think about it all right guys thanks so much for listening in to today's hell divers 2 update if you guys enjoyed this please hit the like button helps us out a lot please comment about anything you saw in this video that you found particularly interesting or helpful and hit subscribe if you have not done so already and make sure to hit the bell for notifications too and we will see you guys in the next video Goodbye for now.